Hello, everybody. Welcome back to We Are Live. We got Dr. Ed in studio. I'm going to mess with... Oh, we got uh, Gardner helping out with something real quick. What do we have? Dr. Ed's from Hillside Animal Hospital. I'll tell you about them. Dr. Ed, he comes in here each week. He plays Dogs on Film with us, but you can see him anytime at Hillside Animal Hospital. It's a full-service veterinary medical facility located right here, St. Louis, Missouri. Professional and courteous staff Hillside Animal Hospital seeks to provide the best possible medical care, surgical care, and dental care for highly valued patients. Those are your pets. They're committed to promoting responsible pet ownership, preventative health care, and health-related educational opportunities for their clients. Hillside Animal Hospital strives to offer excellence in veterinary care to St. Louis and surrounding areas. Check out the website, hillsideanimalhospital.net. And in July, doing another blood drive. I just signed up yesterday. You can too. There's spots available. Feel free to jump in. Dr. Ed, let's formally say hello to you. Gardner, hit it. At your Dr. Ed. Dr. Ed. The good doctor Ed. is in. Mm, mm, mm. How are you, sir? I'm good. That's a heck of an intro. It took Isn't it? Forever. It's a, uh, well, we run a tight <laughs> hey. ship here. We, no, I don't, I don't mean <laughs> no. how, how much he read. So, yeah, That's well, you, you know, we got to let people know. They got to bring their pets to come uh, visit you at Hillside. Dr. Ed, you come in, you play uh, dogs on film. We always have a blast. I usually win. Uh, mm. But we know you're a huge hockey fan. Tonight, kind of a big night. Huge for you. Do you are you excited that it's a game seven? Or are you upset that they didn't bring it home in six? Uh, I don't. I think my answer to to it to both of those questions is no. I, I, for some, I'm not, I'm not really that excited. I'm sure once it gets going and right. you know, and especially if the Blues you know take the lead, I'll get into it. But you know, for some reason, I'm just you know a little apathetic. A little bit. I oh. mean, and, and it's like your birthday. <laughs> hey. Trying to be nice. So you're, <laughs> you were very nice. Uh, great job, Tommy. Uh, so you're you're just kind of in uh, wait mode right now. Yeah, I think so. You know, I I had I could have gone to Game Six. Uh, I turned down a chance to go. Uh, I'm not sorry that I turned them down. Well, yeah. Was it was it the price that did it? Well, you know, in retrospect, I mean, it was a really good price. Um, I could have had. Originally, some uh, they called me and they said they had tickets for four hundred dollars, and I'm thinking, wow, for, for, yeah, no brainer, I'm gonna go. Right. And then they called back and then said, uh, oh no, the Blues sent out another email and raised the price to eight hundred. Oh, is that all? Yeah, which is you know eight hundred dollars considering what people were paying was still a good price. But, right. You know, I said no and I gambled a little bit. So it was your fault they lost because I wasn't there. Yeah, oh, I yeah. feel like it's if Doctor Ed's in the, the house, they bring it home. The butterfly effect, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's more the post dispatches fault. Hey! Oh no, we're not doing that, Doctor Ed. How do you feel about the post dispatches? Uh, quick little mistake they made. Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> good. I don't, I don't know that I'm superstitious. That's good. That means he's an educated, smart man. That's Doctor Ed for you. Uh, uh, actually, I just you know I made a last minute decision not to go to the game because I heard Tommy was going to be out on the road driving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a no, callback. It is. It is a good callback, <laughs> except. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, so he that's doesn't, quite he fair. He doesn't watch Netflix when other people are in the car, which <laughs> right. is... Which is He'll only risk his own life. Yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, but he's not worried about the other million other drivers or pedestrians <laughs> out there. This is a learned doctor. Uh, please, I don't please, know please state your people. case. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Joe Citizen, who I just ran over. <laughs> <laughs> Do you care about him? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know him. I'm sure he's fine, but... Oh, no. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. This is tough. Right, we got to have a talk with the intern. I take all my driving tips from Ted Kennedy. Mm. Oh, no. Oh. You, you and your Kennedy jokes. Yeah. That was... Yeah. Nah, just, don't do the voice. That's just water under the bridge. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh damn it, Doctor. Oh, my God. Damn it. Oh. What the... What is happening? <laughs> Dr. Ed will be opening he for Tommy Mosslander at Southtown Pub. <laughs> uh, that was third. great. Oh. oh, man, oh, man. Oh, uh, wow. Before we get into dogs Thank on you. film, other things happening around, Dr. Ed, we like to educate the folks on uh, veter veterinary happenings, comings, goings. Um, we've done a good job of letting people know, get those heartworm preventative things in June. What are we looking at for general pet care tips? How can people... Um, keep you from buying a new Range Rover by uh, <laughs> letting their pets get too sick where you have to do super expensive surgeries? Well, one of the things that I, I just came back from a, a, a big national conference. Where and, was that? Uh, in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, dry. Love, Phoenix is lovely. Yeah, very hot. Mm -hmm. 
But it's a dry heat. Yeah. I think if I had a dollar for every time I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ed's like, I do a weekly podcast, and I'm really funny. I'm going to need you guys to amp up oh. uh, your, your <laughs> conversation. But uh, one of the things that uh, one of the talks that I went to was about um, how ticks are spreading their, you know. The, Lyme the, disease? Lyme disease. No, no. The, the actual um, ticks themselves are spreading across the country, mm-hmm. you know, multiple species. Got and, it. And spreading outside their, you know, where they all started. Um, and, and, and with it, like you said, the Lyme disease, the incidence of Lyme disease is spreading across the country and other tick-borne diseases are spreading across the country uh, that we're finding in places. And part of it is, is travel from pets. I mean, pets mm. are traveling. Well, they get, they get carte blanche on airplanes now. Yeah, mm. and they get relocated, um, things like that. And, um, yeah, and that's, so that's just, uh, it, it just drove home the importance of you know, having your pet on a flea and tick control mm-hmm. because i mean that's just that preventing the ticks in the first place is going to be the best thing that you keep can them do. out of your bed keep them out of your house everything yeah and it's so easy too with the frontline stuff that you guys have you just put it on their shoulders and they're good for what three months yeah or the next guard a chewable once mm. a month i mean it's yeah. just it's probably even easier right but you mentioned uh you know uh pets traveling i mean and it we talked about that a little bit too the international travel Sure, they want your, you know, the pets have to be, oh, yeah, you're up to date on your rabies. Oh, here you go. Come on in. Right. And we're seeing some international diseases, you know, foreign it's diseases serious? that are coming into the U.S. Guys like Tommy's immune systems can't handle that. Stop mm. making it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you liked making it about you. Not, not, not that when way. it comes to diseases. Not when it comes to diseases. <laughs> have you ever been bit by a tick, Tommy? I have. Have you really? Yeah. Okay. How great. many times? You can count them on uh, one hand. Yeah. I'm really I went glad. Camping, yeah. And it, it, yeah. Glamping. Come on. Mm-hmm. No, I, we had a tent and stuff. Did you play Pokemon Go no, the whole I, time? No. This is when I was little. I called my grandparents when they didn't pick me up. That's I hated amazing. it. Did, I hated wait, you had it. a cell phone? No. Oh. Okay. I used my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I complained until she gave me her phone. I want to make fun of him, but the first time I ever stayed uh, at the literal next door neighbor's house, I uh, ran home crying and stayed. At my parents' house. So. I just, I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And then it was supposed to storm, and there was this, supposed to be a mm. tornado, right? Mm. And so the, the park rangers, we were in uh, Grafton, the Pier Marquette Park. Uh, oh, I love Pier Marquette. Yeah, it's a nice place. I used to run there. That, what was this, in the early 90s? I used to run a 7.2 mile race there every year. What? You what, ran? What kind of scooter? Yeah, and actually you'd have to use ropes at times to get up some of the hills. And this is before he smoked. Mm-hmm. But I also used to run a 10 mile race on the river road. The Great River Road every year, too. Rivers this and was before I smoked. Yes, it was, Tommy. Okay. Uh, but I went there and... Should the pets p- smoke? Mm-mm. No, but it can... Seriously, if, if, if a pet who has asthma or bronchitis lives with the smoker, we, it, they, they can get worse. Very real. That's mm. right. Sorry, Tommy. Go it was, ahead. It was supposed to storm, and there was a potential of a tornado. And so the park ranger took us to this little cave where uh, <laughs> they they where they were like, if, you, if, if a tornado... Sure this wasn't a Boy Scouts thing? It was. I was with my mom. Uh, they said if it if there's a tornado, you come to this cave and this is where you take cover. And so we turned on a flashlight to kind of check it out, you know. And the walls were moving with yeah. spiders. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that might get me too. And so yeah. I, to, uh, be, to be fair, uh, Tommy, uh, that uh, probably uh, would get me too. Okay. And so I'd, I'd I was like, all right, I'm me. going to Edwardsville. Yeah, that's and, fair. And uh, I got there and the power went out that night. So. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm glad I wasn't in Pure Marquette Park. Yeah. yeah. So you went home to the trailer park? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. safer from the tornado? Yeah. That's yeah. A good. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough break. Yeah. Do they allow uh, trailer parks in Edwardsville? I think there's one. Okay. <laughs> I do think there's one. Before they could make up the city rules where there's no more new ones. Did they have the uh, giant chessboard at Pure Marquette when you were there? Did you mm-hmm. go into the lodge at all? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, like, uh, I used to like playing with those because they were, when I was there, they were like as big as me. That was a so. place... My family would go like two or three times a year. It's a fun place, yeah. Just to relax or do whatever. My grandparents like going there. I like I'm the, a big fan of parks. I like going to the flea market there and then uh, taking a drive through the park. Do you do flea markets, Dr. Ed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you look for? What do I look for? Are you, are you looking for anything in particular? No. I- Italian things. No. That's presumptuous. Keep people watching. That's yeah. That is also yeah. fun. Yeah. Damn it, Dr. That's that's so no, good. that's a good, good answer. answer. Very good <laughs> answer. Great answer. Uh, I was, hell, that's a trivia, probably. Uh, yeah. I might make a note Flea of this. Markets. Yeah. I, uh, I ate at a restaurant in Clayton, and that's good people watching. It's different. City people and Clayton people are very different. It's very, uh, very fun to take note mm-hmm. of such things. 
Um, Dr. Ed, did you see Brett Hall before the game six? Yeah, on TV, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you also scream, don't let him grab that mic oh. when you saw it? Should we have a dedicated Brett Hall cam for game seven? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's a good thing? No, I think I wanted a plaguer cam, like where he's not watching the game. And like you just you go to the Blues website and like here's the Plager cam where you just you watch the game and you can see what's happening with him while it's going on. Just the anxiousness with Bobby Plager. Well, he's so focused, right? But with with uh, Hole, you can probably do like, you know, those they were doing with the Winter Classic. He's got a it's tequila. Like, it's like the build up Coda go to the game. It. You could do like you do like a half hour. You, you see it afterwards or whatever. Yeah. But if you were a day with. Brett Hull on the day of Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final, and you just get all the behind-the-scenes stuff. That's something I'm watching. I'll pay extra for that. Hey, here's that video, by the way. I do have that. Oh, he, may oh, we? Oh, still, we yeah, I mean, we got to take advantage of this while we where's, can. Where's Kachuk during, during all this? You know, you haven't seen him on TV at all, have you? No, not mm -hmm. on TV. I've heard somebody talking about him being around, though. Yeah. Hmm. There's Game 6, and we're here. Let go, oh. Blues! Uh, oh. oh. Bernie Federico, the greatest of all time! Let's go, Blues! Let's go, Blues! <laughs> that little thing with the mouth at the <laughs> end, that Again, kills yeah. me. Yeah, and then Holly brings him back yeah. in for the... For for the trying to figure out his escape plan while this is all going on, and I'm like, oh my god, this is great. Oh, it's amazing. I, I mean, was at home by myself watching the early portion of that game, and I was in the living room just laughing out loud. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, oh, word, I need someone here to help watch this with me. Well, that was something. <sighs> Certainly was. Uh, today we've got dogs on film. I know, uh, Gardner, did you go to Sean's apartment for this to record? Yeah, we went yesterday. How did was the recording was the and editing yesterday? It was good. Yeah. We had a good chat. Okay. How's uh, Sean reacting? He's not a native St. Louisan. Is he supporting the Blues um, in their endeavors? I believe he mentions that within Dogs on Film. Oh, wow. Uh, because he will be working tonight. He will be bartending and helping out at... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Missouri Bar and Grill. Oh gosh, that could get out of hand. That's where he. You can find him there every Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. That's where he is. The old newspaper bar. Doctor Ed, we put a poll out on Twitter. Will uh, win or lose? Will folks behave tonight in St. Louis? Oh, uh, boy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends how 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 how, they, how, how, it how goes. whatever goes. Yeah. yeah. If we lose like we lost last week, there's going to be broken windows like if there's like a controversial call that happens late in the game or like god forbid overtime mm -hmm. like i don't know a hand pass uh yeah that i mean i i'm going inside the apartment and just staying in there turning off the lights and you know i'd, I'd like to think that we're going to behave either way <coughs> i guess that's just wishful thinking but you know i i because i always get so i don't know not embarrassed for them it just Worried, anxious, nervous. Well, I, you know, I see that happen in other cities, and I'm like, yeah. really? You know, come on. It's a game. You know, we won. That's great. Your team won. We're champions. But, you know, you have to set things on fire. And, right. You know, and that's what makes it fun. The official <laughs> poll was win or lose, will things get out of hand in St. Louis tonight? St. Louis Blizzards or Bruins. We have options. The arch will be tilted. They celebrate the right way. You know, like the best fans in baseball celebrate. Yeah. Or uh, Guns N' Roses 91. Oh. So those... <laughs> Were you there for that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Crazy night. <laughs> when Tommy was negative eight. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's do some dogs negative on film. Seven. What do you What do you say, Gardner? <laughs> we can. Okay. Well, let's uh, get to the star of the show, Sean, and uh, we'll play some dogs on film. How does Dogs on Film work, uh, Mr. Gardner? Well, basically, you guys, and it'll be Dr. Ed versus Chris this week because Tommy helped me with some of these. Mm. I helped. Mm. So thank you, Tommy, for your help. Okay. You're well, welcome. Well. But we have six total movies. We do three sets of movies. And within those sets, those pairings, we pit one movie against another. You guys have to guess which one has a better score according to Rotten Tomatoes. If you get it correct, you get a point. If you don't, you don't get a point, obviously. 
but you can have a maximum of three possible points out of that. So when we're done with the three sets, we see who has the most points and declare them the winner. If there's a tie, we have a tiebreaker, a seventh movie, that you have to guess closest to the actual score. Now, arbitrarily throughout, I'll decide if I want to let someone know or the group know if they're right or wrong. If you're right. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. Oh, that's not working again. Mm. Yeah. Gardner. So, Gardner, uh, what, what are you going to have to do? I don't know. Hold, hold on. Hold on a second here. Let's see. Okay, that one's working. Okay, so we've got it going. I will but not be hearing that. Working. I still think it's better if he does them both. Let's see if that Yeah, dog. Works. Yeah, dog. Okay, yeah. there we Technical go. Technical difficulties no Little more. adjustment. Okay. That's the mid-coast way. We figure so, it out. <laughs> we we funny adapt. last week, Doctor. We adapt. He, he was making the noises himself. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot you weren't here. Yep. Something went wrong and... It was all Can you give me. us an example? Uh, yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. And then it was. It hurts my soul. <laughs> Doctor had looked away from me mm-hmm. and rolled his yeah. eyes. We, get an app- we have some openings next week. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's how we do it with the tiebreaker. Now we have themes. We used to have one overarching theme called dogs. We ran out of dog movies, so we come up with our own theme. Sometimes it's one theme for the entire thing. Sometimes we do pairings. Each pairing will have its own theme. We've done that again this week. So to let you know what the pairings are, what the themes are to those pairings, rather, Holy Grail movies. Ooh, Holy Grail movies because the blues are looking to hoist the Holy Grail of hockey, the Stanley Cup. They're looking to do that tonight. We've talked a lot about puppets this week, as we found out on Monday. Tommy, on the side, likes to make puppets <laughs> for fun. Yeah. Now, Travis <laughs> kept calling them Muppets <laughs> instead of puppets on Monday. So we have Muppet movies, Muppet movies. And then we have, you know, something that's happened where Justin Bieber challenged Tom Cruise to a fight in the octagon mm. on Twitter. Mm-mm. So we talked a lot about Tom Cruise. Justin Bieber this week. So why don't we pair, do a pairing with what used to be a pairing. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman movies. And then I won't tell you what the tiebreaker is quite yet. But there's our uh, theme. And of course, my friend Sean, I record little descriptions with him to help you out if you haven't seen the movie. To give you a little guidance along the way. So he'll be your narrator for each descriptor of the movies. Okay, guys? As I get a phone call uh, mm. from an 844 number. You want me to answer We won't it? answer that one. Mm. You want me to answer it? No, that's okay, Tommy, but thank you, though. Okay, you guys ready? Is that a yes? Yes, let's okay, do it. One-on-one, yes. on one, Dr. Ed versus okay. Dr. Dunk. Holy Grail movies. Here's your first one. What you drinking? A little something to wake up. Vodka water with a squirt of that juice out of the bottle for flavor and color. Tang with a kick. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, 1989. Fantasy action, two hours, eight minutes. The intrepid explorer Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, sets out to rescue his father, Sean Connery, a medievalist who vanished while searching for the Holy Grail. Following clues in the old man's notebook, Indy arrives in Venice, where he enlists the help of beautiful academic Alison Doty. But they are not the only ones who are on on the trail. But they're not the only ones that are on the trail. And some sinister old enemies, the Nazis, soon come out of the woodwork. Couldn't get away from those Nazis, could he? What do you think of the Nazis? Uh, not much. You know, bad, bitty, bad ideolo- bitty, uh, ideology. What? <laughs> hmm. Still a little trouble getting that one out. So Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is your first Holy Grail movie. Going against? Well, look at this. Next up, we have Monty Python and the Holy Grail. 1975, 1990, 1975, fantasy adventure, one hour, 32 minutes. A comedic set, send-up of the grim circumstances of the Middle Ages as told through the story of King Arthur and framed by the modern-day murder investigation. When the mythical king of the Britons, Graham Chapman, leads his knights on a quest for the Holy Grail, they face a wide array of horrors, including a persistent black knight, John Cleese, a three-headed giant, a cadre of shrubbery champions, Challenged knights, the perilous castle of Antrax, a killer rabbit, a house of virgins, and a handful of rude Frenchmen. Both those were Holy Grail movies. <laughs> the Blues are hoping to hoist the Holy Grail. Wednesday night. 
Oh, God, I can't wait for that. I mean, I'm working that night. <laughs> win or lose, it's not going to be good. You got a message for the team? Go oh, just win. Get it over with for crying out loud. All right, there's his message for the team. Get it over with for crying out loud. This is a Stanley Cup of movies. This is a, this is a heavyweight fight. Monty Python and the Holy Grail versus Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I don't see it as a... It's a no-brainer in my mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going. I'll go. I, I have mine locked in. I'm not gonna let you affect me. But go ahead. I, I gotta go with Monty Python. I was gonna go Indiana Jones. So uh, I think I maybe mean, it's the an enjoyable movie, but I don't see it. Yeah, as high Monty as Python's an all-timer, but maybe yeah. that's why. Never seen Monty Python. They've been really. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> all right, Doctor Ed, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. A ninety-seven. That's appropriate. For yeah. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Indiana Jones and Last Crusade in 88. So both. Yeah. See, that's both a lot things. higher. Than, I mean, I enjoyed the movie, you know, for what it's like worth. a 77. It's entertainment. Entertainment. But yeah. I, yeah, but I, not an 88. Do you okay. think the, uh, like, the the duo of Harrison Ford and Sean Connery with, in that particular one maybe adds to it some? Yeah. I mean, Sean Connery was good. He's, you know, can, yeah. I, don't, I can't think of a bad movie he's in, really. But. It's Highlander's good. It's the worst of the first three. The fourth one doesn't count, but it's the worst of the fourth. The first fourth three. one disappointed me because they—if you're going to bring aliens in like that, do it the right way, and they didn't do it. Mm. Aliens. Yeah, there was aliens in the Crystal Skull. Crystal Are you Skull, serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's how the movie the one, ends. Nah, the one with uh, Kate Capshaw was pretty bad in Nepal or whatever. That the was Temple of Doom. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. Was it? That yeah, was I remember. I, I remember not. Liking it when I watched it. I, Raiders of the Lost Ark is the best. That, yeah. Yeah. I could see. That makes sense. There Good. we go. Good eye, Tommy. You're welcome. <sighs> All right. So nice Dr. poll. I thought we had some gardener trickery happening. No, Dr. I mean, Ed went with the favorite. They're both right. highly rated, though. So Yeah. Okay, we got some Muppet movies next. You guys ready? Please. There we go. Muppets Most Wanted, 2014. Comedy, music, adventure, one hour, 59 minutes. Dominic Bad Guy, Rick Gervais... Ricky Gervais. Mm. Ricky Gervais, mm. the Muppets' mm. new manager, convinces the gang to embark on a world tour. Kermit the Frog doubts that it's good. I- doubts it's a good idea. A feeling that's proven right when lookalike Constantine escapes from prison, takes Kermit's place, and lands Miss Piggy's sweetie in a Siberian prison. While the frog tries to convince his captors of his true identity, Constantine and Dominic are free to carry out their plan to steal London's crown jewels. You've been to London? I've been to London. I saw the Kinks, I saw Bob Dylan, uh, both for free because my brother sneaks into everything and he snuck me in. We didn't know where we were, me and my brother. So we were just kind of bumming around. We went out to get there early so he could case the joint, I suppose. And I end up meeting a bunch of Jamaicans. I go off with the Jamaicans and smoking weed and shit in their f***ing apartment. My brother's getting itchy because it's f***ing almost showtime and I'm not there yet and he's like hey man i've got this whole thing set up and uh, finally i show up all stoned out of my mind at the end we kind of got separated somehow and uh i didn't have any money left you know i was broke and i didn't even know where our bed and breakfast was but i got on a bus and the guy goes come on i'll show you how to get home and he gave me a free ride and, and he was able to get me back to my place it was very nice of the london bus driver that's all i have to say about that so there's dr there's ed is <laughs> speechless I, this man has seen animals tangled up into the most <laughs> horrific situations. He has to tell people things that are horrible. I guarantee you he has not been without word in a 40-plus year career. And just now, Sean just <laughs> stole the soul out of your tongue. What just what just happened there, Gardner? It's like an international incident written on <laughs> <laughs> He's telling then me. I stole Churchill's <laughs> jacket and like, said, screw you. I love finding out new things about Tommy each day. I've known Sean for a while now, and I'm still learning about his stories and his life. And as he's telling me this, I'm just like, I'm not saying a word. I just let the man talk. Yeah. And we figure it out later. But I'm like, I have not heard this one because I'm. we were done with that. I go. You saw the Kinks and Bob Dylan in <laughs> London? <laughs> right. He's like, yeah. I'm like, how have you never told me this? He goes, ah, I don't know. I've done a lot of stuff. This is a Forrest Gump uh, situation. So, so, he, so he's talking about getting stoned and sneaking into a concert, and Gardner doesn't care about any of that. You saw the Kinks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't include it there, but after uh, we were done recording, uh, we started, you know, we pull up some music online or whatever, and there's Sean and I in his apartment. La, la. La, 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 la. You would have enjoyed it, Tommy. 
So there's a... Uh, yeah, I had to go home. I don't even know what movie he was talking about. Uh, that was Muppets Most Wanted. Muppets Most Wanted. All you had to do was okay. say London, and it, okay. it's a trigger. And, and it's all gone. Well, we got some more from Sean mm. from this session as well. So oh, goody, goody. Here's your next one. The Muppet Movie, 1979, Adventure Road, one hour, 37 minutes. After Kermit the Frog decides to pursue a movie career, he starts his cross-country trip from Florida to California. Along the way, he meets and befriends, and befriends Fozzie Bear, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, and rock musicians, Mr. Dr. Teeth, and the Electric Mayhem. When Kermit is offered a job by Doc Hopper, Charles Durning, to advertise the fried frog legs at his restaurant oh, no. chain, Kermit turns <laughs> Hopper down. However, Hopper refuses to relent and pursues Kermit and his companions to a final showdown. All right. The Muppet Movie versus Muppets Most Wanted. I'll go first. I mean, 1979 Muppet. You can't. There's no way Ricky Gervais beats that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with it. Yeah, I, I I had my choice made up and up, and I was gonna go with Muppet Movie too, the, yeah. the original. And I just I don't I don't see it. I don't see any of the That's other a ones. It's a classic, right? Yeah. Like, All right, both you guys. Connection. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. <sighs> Got it right. Me. Keep going, Tommy. I don't know any okay. more lyrics. Okay. Oh, Kermy. Uh, the Muppet Movie in '88, Muppets Most Wanted in '80. So okay. still pretty good. Ratings. So worth seeing, Ricky Gervais with Rick Gervais. <laughs> Rick Gervais. He he just gives up something yeah. like Lou Dobbs. He's like vodka's got the tongue. Trying to say the city in Mex, uh, saying a city in Mexico. Oh, just, well, uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, mm. the, All right. Uh, first Muppet movie is uh, the one right before Muppets Most Wanted is really good too, with Jason Segel. He was. I know he was really into that, and he's a great actor. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. say that. Tell me, doesn't know about. The love about of Jason <laughs> Siegel on this show. <laughs> there's a oh, lot of love. love for Jason there's a Siegel. lot of love oh, yeah. for his talent, and uh, yeah, nope. it's, it's got a history. Doctor Ed with we'll two talk later. Chris with one as we head into our final pairing. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman movies. <laughs> Heated matchup here, Doctor Ed. Yeah, yeah, you could go with Days of Thunder, and then they'd both win. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. There you go. All right, next we have Days of Thunder. 1990, <laughs> drama sport, one hour, 48 minutes. In a fast-paced world of NASCAR, a rivalry a rivalry brews between rookie hotshot Cole Trickle, Tom Cruise, and veteran racer Rowdy Burns, Michael Rooker. When both of them are seriously injured in competition, the former bitter rivals become close friends, with Cole's spirits, for, spirits restored by a romance with neurosurgeon Dr. Claire Lewicki, Nicole Kidman. And Rowdy's still sidelined by injuries, Cole decides to race Rowdy's car at a Daytona 500 against underhanded newcomer Russ Wheeler. Gary Eels. Gary Elways. Gary Elways. You never get his name right. I never will. Could you do Scientology? No, I couldn't do Scientology. Why not? Because I went down to Juarez, Mexico once, and I was sitting in a bar, and they'd have these guys running around with big, you know, like boom boxes hooked up, you know, to uh, like metal metal pipes. And for a quarter, you hold the metal pipes, and he turns the volume up till you can't take it anymore. Ah! And they let go, and that's what they do in Scientology. And I've read a little bit about the, you know, the boat and all that crazy. Shit. The guy's a nut. All right. Yeah, I misunderstood, uh, Chris. I thought you were doing like one Tom Cruise movie versus a Nicole Kidman movie. Oh, that, okay. That's why I said that. So yeah, this. So each, okay. the each of these movies will have both of them in it. Gotcha. Both of them gotcha. in it. So. And then you also got a little tidbit about Sean's visit to Juarez. Juarez is <laughs> one of the most dangerous places on the planet. During the big cartel boom ten mm. years ago, I don't know if it was then or still is no, now. I'll have to ask Sean later. There's a movie called Sicario, which talks about that. Which a big part of that movie takes part in Juarez. Whew, that's bad news. Sean, right. Sean's been places, as I've said before. And Got it. Everyone is learning. Sean's, Sean's banned from places. <laughs> yes, there is right. that as well. He's been places once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Days of Thunder, your first one. Here's your next one. Far and Away, 1992, drama romance, two hours, 30 minutes. Joseph, Tom Cruise, and his landlord's daughter, Shannon, Nicole Kidman, travel from Ireland to America in hopes of claiming free land in Oklahoma. The pair get sidetracked in Boston, where Joseph takes up boxing to support himself. When he loses a pivotal fight, the two are left penniless. Now faced with poverty, the two must find new ways to scrape by. As their affection for each other grows, Joseph questions whether he is truly what Shannon needs in her life. Did you see that uh, Justin Bieber challenged Tom? 
Tom Cruise to a fight on Twitter. No. Really? Yeah. Wow. He wants to, like, do an MMA fight against him. Wow. That would draw some bucks. Who you got in that? I don't know. I decided to challenge John Larroquette to a fight on John Twitter. John Larroquette. I'll take Larroquette. <laughs> Over me? I'm taking Larroquette. Remember the John Larroquette show? Yeah. You know where it was based? Right here in St. Louis at the Greyhound Station. I said, let's meet at the Greyhound meet Station. Meet me at the, uh, and, is and that's, no, it's a new Greyhound Station. It's not the old one. It was a weird place. I, I dropped somebody off there. There's birds flying around inside. Weird. <laughs> Been to the old Greyhound Station, too. So we have Far and Away versus Days of Thunder. Hmm. Far and Away versus Days of Thunder. Two I'll to take, one, Dr. Ed Leeds. I'll take Far and Away. Far and away for Chris. You know, here's the challenge. I could go as far and away and guarantee the win <laughs> or a Days of Thunder and make it a challenge. Uh, I was I was going to go with Far and Away, but I'll go with Days of Thunder just Look because the of man. the NASCAR craze. Yeah, you know? I feel like that's going to be it. Yeah, you know, I'll do it just to give you a chance, you know. Just Thank give you. A chance you're, to win. you're a gracious uh, host, sir. Dr. Ed. He literally gave it away. Should have gone with my first choice. 39 for Days of Thunder. 48 for Far and Away. Couple of winners, huh? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best. Hey, man. Hey, man. 39 Days of Thunder. Let's see. Far and Away. 48. I went they in another movie together. They were in um, Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. That Not so much. No money. wonder this marriage didn't work out. They made yeah. terrible movies together. Right. Eyes Wide Shut was like, I'm not going to say in case we ever need to use it. Okay. We've used it before. Oh, yeah. we, it was like a 79, I think. Yeah, it wasn't that high. It was at lower 70s. Oh. But All right. So we have a tie. Overtime brought to you by Hillside Animal Hospital. This is game seven of the Dogs on Film. Yes. Sudden death overtime. Mm hmm. Now, last What's Friday. It gonna be? On We Are Live, we had a guest. We had a guest named Bill Bellamy. That's right. And he was in a movie. A number of movies. But one in particular was about football. Ooh. Here's your tiebreaker. The tiebreaker. Any given Sunday, 1999. Drama sport. Two hour, 42 minutes. Four years ago, Tony D'Amato's... Wait a minute. Four years ago, Tony D'Amato's Al Pacino, Miami Sharks, were at the top. Oh, I get it. Now his team is struggling with three consecutive losses, sliding attendance, and aging heroes, particularly 39-year-old quarterback Jack Cap Rooney, Dennis Quaid. Off the field, D'Amato is struggling with a failed marriage and estranged children, and he's on a collision course with Christina Pagniacci. Pagniacci. Cameron Diaz, the young president, co-owner of the Sharks organization. The movie also features friend of the show Bill Bellamy as Sh Jimmy Sh Sanderson. What? Friend of the show Bill Bellamy as Jimmy Anderson. Sanderson. God dang it. As Jimmy Sanderson. I gotta find a job. Anybody out there knows what job I can take, please call me or call Chris. Don't tell me. I don't know how to use a computer, so I guess that makes me unemployable. What if we became oh. doorman? I'd love to be a doorman. Any Anybody looking for a doorman out there, I'd be happy to do it. Especially if I get to wear an outfit. Especially a cap, a sky piece, I like to call it if you're a doorman. I really gotta go to the bathroom right now. Bye bye. All right. Do you tell him to do the bathroom thing every time? <clears throat> I might uh, egg okay. him on a bit. Be okay. like, how's your yeah. bladder? Okay, got it. Yeah. So, to remind me, Bill Bellamy, who, what what part did he have in the movie? I think he was one of the players. He Was he a receiver? Yeah, something like that. Okay. He, uh, what do we have, Dennis Quaid. Yeah. Terrell Owens made an appearance in the... Uh, Jamie Foxx. Fox. LL Cool J. Yeah. Al Pacino. Bill Goldberg. Bill Goldberg was, that, was in it? Was that and, Goldberg and or was that Ann the Margaret. replacements? And Margaret. And Margaret. Okay. We had, oh, uh, Thomas Jane had a part in it. He's yeah. He's a pretty big actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, an ensemble cast. Was it Thomas Jane or no? It was uh, It was the guy who was Harvey Dent. Lawrence Taylor in that movie? Yeah. Lawrence Taylor. Who was Harvey Dent? Harvey Dent. Uh, what's his name? Aaron Eckhart. Yes. Not Thomas Good Jane. Call. Very interchangeable. I think they are. Now, I don't think I realized that until you just said this. Yeah, though. and I think Bill Bellamy shook his head when I said it. Whatever. Okay. Okay. A lot going on here. I got, an, I got a thought on this, and uh, I don't know where Dr. Ed sits on it. Did you see the film? Yes, I have. Did you love it? No. Uh, you know, it was, it was again, fine. a little entertaining, but not great. Okay. So we're probably on the same path with this. I think the speech makes us young men who were a certain age when we saw it think it was a better movie than it was 
I'm going to go with a 64%. <coughs> 64 for Chris. I was going a little higher. I'm going to go with 71. Yeah. 71. Still fresh, both fresh, decent movie. Gets uh, it's a it's a football movie, so it's going to be glorified. A yeah, bit. It, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been disappointed by Rotten Tomatoes, so I think I'm just oh, going to. You think you do? Okay, what do we got, Chris? I made every bad decision a middle-aged man can make. Pissed away all my money, believe it or not. I love that. So I love that part of the speech. Cajun man or Al Pacino? I don't know. They it's both kind work. of a blend. Mm-hmm. Tommy's I, crying. I pushed away anyone that ever I loved me. I have a really bad poker face. <laughs> <laughs> Any given Sunday, a 52, according to wow. Rotten Tomatoes. Chris wins. He gave you that. He did. He literally handed me that. That's the kind of man he is. That's the kind of man you want operating on your dog whenever mm -hmm. it's go time at Hillside Animal Hospital. Dr. Ed, I apologize that you lost your own <laughs> segment. I'm going to leave. You're going to walk out. You're going to have it. Now. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Helps. Ed might I throw wrote it this week. So you microphone. can be mad at me. Don't be mad at him. Not yeah. at all. I don't get mad about these things. Dr. Ed does not get mad. On camera. He gets even. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, there's a reason the Hill is, uh, has the ties that it has. Mm -hmm. Where are you watching the game tonight? Just at home. Okay. Yeah. Bring home a win. Yep. All right. Prediction? Um... <laughs> I think the Blues will do it. I mean, it, all through the playoffs, they've, they've followed up a bad game with a really good one. True. Know? And uh, so I think they can do it. What's I the, thought, what's the I game thought like? Dr. Ed was just going to go, uh, Bruins 4-1. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was just going to completely dump on everything. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> so 50-50 chance of getting it right. So. Right. So what do you got? Blues what? 3-2. Um, oh, like that. that's tough. Overtime or... Yeah. Uh, no, not in overtime. Hi, th this They're going to be up 3-1 and give up a late goal? Yeah. <coughs> mm, I'll take it. This is my concern, Dr. Ed, is if this game goes to overtime. Like, I just don't – whatever City the result is apart. at that point. Both cities. Is – I don't know if I could be around people at that moment. Like, like if, I'm really, out, if I'm out watching the game, if I go to my local water, watering hole like I plan, if it gets to be overtime – I don't know if I want to stay there and watch it with other people. Don't you want to hug your friends when they win? No. Kevin doesn't have friends like that. It's true. No. I saw, look. smoking buddies. I was there for Sean. Sean's been a Cubs fan forever. I was there with, I wanted to watch that game seven with him when the Cubs won. It was raining that night in St. Louis. He was wandering outside, smoking the street, just wandering around, and I wanted to witness that. I wanted to be around that if they won. I was happy for him and happy for people like that. I just don't know if I could ha handle, but I wasn't invested as much with that. Like, I, w I was rooting against the Cubs, but I was also rooting for my friend to be happy. Here, I don't have one or the other. There's no hedging your bet. So not knowing the outcome, I don't know if I want to be around – not knowing what's going to happen. Do you, do you really think that St. Louisans are going to be that upset if we lose? I mean, considering. I think so. I really? think bars can be because we have alcohol involved. Yeah. You know. And that, you know. I, I've long said hockey things. fans don't know how to process uh, athletics like a lot of other sports And uh, just so everyone knows, I may have claimed things on this show before, but if the Blues do win. And people are celebrating. I will not be in Arnold, Missouri, <coughs> robbing all the banks in Arnold, knowing that their entire population has probably moved downtown to celebrate. Okay. Wink, wink. So yeah. I won't be doing that. All right. Yeah, wink, Dr. Wink, Ed, wink. as your witness, you will not be robbing all of Jefferson County <coughs> tonight if the Blues do happen to win. Correct. <laughs> we sure hope they do. And we hope you visit Dr. Ed at Hillside Animal Hospital. Again, uh, if you check out the Facebook page, they have a blood drive coming up. You can go and you can get a cookie. And you can help out someone in need of cookie. blood. Yeah. After, well, you're not, we're not going to sign you. Now, so if I bring somebody and make them get blood, can I have a cookie? You can then have a cookie. Yeah. So we do have one of the Blues players who is a client. And uh -huh. I oh, won't mention his name on the air. But okay. this is a plea that the Stanley Cup needs to visit Hillside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Perfect. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe you, you'll be like, hey, I'm not saying I'll deny your animal care the next time it needs something. But if that cup doesn't come here... Maybe find a different practice. 
<laughs> so go visit Dr. Ed at Hillside Animal Hospital. Bring your pets. Get your preventative care taken care of. Dr. Ed, pleasure as always. Thank you for handing the victory to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one. I do, I do. We'll see Dr. Ed next week. Thank you, sir. We are live, live, live. We are live, live, live. We are live, live, live. We are live. Welcome back to We Are Live, live in Grand Center, Midcoast Media. Check out the website. Guys, big thanks to Dr. Ed from Hillside for coming in. Big thanks to Tommy, the intern, for doing what he does. And uh, we definitely appreciate folks like Getaway Carts. That's right, getawaycarts.com is where you go for more website information. If you're looking for golf carts that you can customize without limits, that's where you head. And also big thanks to Tommy Bannister, Circa Properties. He's a realtor in the St. Louis area, and he will help you buy or sell your new home today. That's Tommy Bannister, Circa Properties, partners with We Are Live. Guys, we had a, uh, a melee to get to, mm. and uh, it's a very important question involving uh, tonight and the activities that the St. Louis Blues will be involved in. So let's get right to it, everybody. Uh, we asked you what will happen in the city of St. Louis regardless, win or lose, uh, with the results, mm -hmm. uh, seventeen percent. The arch will be tilted. Thirty-three percent celebrate the right way. Fifty percent say Guns and Roses. Ninety-one. Uh -oh. No matter the Burn outcome, it down. Uh -oh. could yeah. get rough. Do we agree with that? You think it's going to get out of hand? No. No. Yeah, I think uh, I think somebody will get upset that somebody's recording something and. I'll turn it to whole thing. There's, going, there's always going situation. to be incidents, yeah. and Tommy's oh, right too. We'll know about those incidents too because they will be on social media and that. Certainly. And the news. Yeah. So, well, yeah, they'll be on social media. The news will pick that up, and then blah blah blah. The cycle repeats itself. You know what sucks go. about this though? You know, when Cardinals win the World Series, it's in like, uh, in like November, late, late, later of the year. But now we're in June firework stands are open mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are pe there's been fireworks going off in my neighborhood a lot lately. yeah we're gonna hear some stuff mm -hmm. there's gonna be a little fire hopefully what hopefully not no, not like a property destroying fire but you know enough now the what if there cover. is now what if there is then you heard it here first okay there it is good job uh guys we got fair or foul and uh we'll get to that in just a moment we asked you a really mm -hmm. important question uh also <laughs> blues related uh, Pro Sports Fans Championship Celebrations slash Tantrums. Winner gets an STLAF hat. Hit it! Let's do some fair foul. At this defining moment, change has come to America. People often ask me, what's fair or foul? Is it a segment? Is it a movement? Is it hope? I can't say for certain. Time will be a true test of its power. But I can say, fair or foul is now and forever for the people. Gather around the radio with your loved ones and hold on to your butts. It's now time for FAIR. We give it back to you, the people. Or FOUL. Tommy, can you laugh? <laughs> oh, God, that sounds painful. <laughs> Ooh, FAIR. <laughs> FAIR or FOUL. It's the segment I created because I'm the best person in the world. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm a creative genius, am I not? Yeah, it's great. It's a great thing I did. Guys, I'm never going to stop talking about it. Nobody else can use the words fair or foul in the world. It's great. It's you guys, you guys, you guys tell me I'm a genius, right? Tell me I'm a genius. You're tell a genius. me that's why I'm in New York. You're yeah, genius. yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is getting Ooh. weird. Sometimes I tell Elmo how great I this am. This is getting weird. Ah, all right, guys. It's time. Oh my God. For fair <laughs> oh. or foul. Oh. oh, that was gross. That was appropriation. Oh. No, nah, this, this is making fun of Travis. Oh, oh, okay. I hope he sees this. Oh my, that was intense. Ooh. <sighs> we asked you a really important question. Thousand dollars on improv classes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Putting those skills to use. Oh, great Here skills. we go. I love them. Fair. Have you looked around, boys? One word. Blight. When Vladdy and the boys take care of business tonight in Beantown and hoist that chalice high above their heads, we get to work and burn the Meffin City down. 
I want to see a truck on fire on top of the arch. I want to see someone <laughs> drive that bus off the roof of the city museum. Everything is rubble. Then we start the gentrification process and rebuild when we sober up next week. Skate, yeah. boys, skate. TTs, pink eye. That's nice. Oof, that I was picture, intense. I just pictured that bus going. Oh, yeah. Oof. Ah! Damn. Foul. Win or lose, fans are going to wreck the city worse than Brett Hull's liver at first puck. Mm. <laughs> That'll do it for fair foul. Who are you voting for, Black Sheep or TT's Pink Eye? Ooh. Gardner. Oh, man. Black Sheep gave a first puck reference. That's pretty nice. I'll go TT's Pink Eye, though. TT's Pink Eye with a vote. Your, it's your birthday. You don't have to. Oh, thank you for reminding everyone again. Uh, TT's Pink Eye has won an STLAF <laughs> hat. Big day for him, big day for the Blues, big day for St. Louis. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in today. For Tommy the Intern, Chris the Producer, and uh, Dr. Ed the Veterinarian. Uh, hopefully, Blues win tonight. We've got something fun to talk about tomorrow, mm -hmm. and uh, the ashes of uh, St. Louis will be smoldering, and it'll at least be celebratory. Mm. Uh, guys, that's it for We Are Live today. See you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Tommy, can I get a piece? Peace.